Log into AWS Management Console. Click on Services. Scroll down. You will find API Gateway service under Networking section. Click on API Gateway. To create a API Gateway, let me choose the API type. There are HTTP API, WebSocket API, RESTful API as well. Let me choose RESTful API. Click on Build. Let me click on OK. Choose the protocol as REST as I am deploying RESTful API. Then click on New API. Then provide the API name and the description and the endpoint type. AWS is allowing us to deploy the example API which is pre-configured the API definition using Swagger 2.0. This example API is defining the API definition and the backend services which will be exporting the business services to the API gateway. Scroll down and click on import. Now I can see that the API has got successfully imported from the Swagger definition and the API gateway template has been created. I can see the get method post method is got created for the API gateway. We can see the gateway structure has been created for the get and post methods and when I click on get it will show us the get method execution process and when I click on post it will show us the post method execution steps. So far the API gateway has been created however we need to deploy the API in order to use the services exported by the backend services. Hence I need to click on actions, click on deploy API. Specify the deployment stage, then the stage name, specify the description, then specify the deployment description, then click on deploy. Now we can see that the stage has been deployed successfully which we can see under the stages section. When we click on the IVQ test stage name, we can see the hierarchy of the methods which are supported by this particular stage. Currently, this API has been deployed to use get method and post method. We can also see the invoke URL, which URL has to be invoked by the clients to access the API to access the applications which are deployed as a backend services to this particular API gateway. Let me go back to the resources section to see which resources has been deployed to use by this particular API gateway. I can see that slash pets is one of the resource which has been deployed and is now made available to the end clients to access this particular resource using the stage. Hence, let me go back to the stages. Click on the stage name. Copy the invoke URL. Go to the browser. Let me pause the get request to access the pets resource. Now I can see the pets available and the different pets IDs as well. This is the data which has been exposed by the backend application and this data is now being accessible using the API gateway rather directly sending the request to the backend services. We can even provide the pet ID as a request method to get the specific information about the specific pet ID. It is possible because when you go back to the API gateway to the resources section, we can see that the pet ID is also mentioned as a resource which can be accessible by the end client by passing the get request or put request by accessing the invoke URL of the stage. As discussed in the previous lecture, API gateway will be acting as a proxy which is proxying the request which is made by the end clients to the backend services which can also record the number of API calls and we can see the logs information by clicking on the dashboard which is showing that the number of API calls made to access the specific API and the latency is involved between the request and the response. We can also see that how many number of errors are being reported with 4xx error or 5xx error code. Currently, Authentication and authorization is not enabled, hence the reason the end client is able to make 
get request to get the required data for the specific resource. To enable the authentication, we can go back to the API gateway, click on API keys, then click on create API key, specify the API key name, then click on save, click on show. Now we can see that API key has been created successfully. This API key must be associated with the API stage so that authentication and authorization will be enabled. When the clients are making a request to access the services, the client must be providing the API key for authentication and authorization. This is explaining how to create Amazon API gateway in the AWS cloud and how to deploy the API to access the backend services. That's it for this lecture. I will show you different AWS API gateway use cases in the next lecture. Thank you.